السلام عليك زين الأنبياء السلام على بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي الصادق الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his absolute blessings upon us and from the greatest of his blessings upon us is getting to be from the nation and the ummah of the Prophet Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him from the greatest events in his miraculous life sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is without a doubt the Isra and Mi'raj the night journey and heavenly ascent that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went on the 27th night of Rajab. This event is a night that undoubtedly shows us some of his high esteem and great rank with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And it's for this very reason that we as Muslims try our best to honor this night and to honor this day out of joy for the Prophet ﷺ, out of reverence for the Prophet ﷺ. Toward the beginning of this journey, the Prophet ﷺ said that the angel Jibra'il came to me and he placed his hand on my back and laid me down. He then proceeded to open my chest and he removed my heart and washed it with Zamzam water. The opening of the blessed chest of the Prophet ﷺ was not only once in his life, but rather it occurred, according to most scholars, four times. The first time that his blessed chest was open and washed was when he was under the care of, uh, of uh, Halima as Saadiyah when he was a child. The second time his chest was open and his heart was washed was when he was just about 10 years old. The third time this occurred was, as the scholars say, just as he received. Prophethood or right after. And the fourth time is when this journey uh, was about to take place or sometime during this journey. And the scholars of hadith, according to different narrations, tell us that there are some narrations of this hadith where the Prophet ﷺ says, when the angel Jibreel was washing my heart, he was assisted by the angel Mikail. So not only did one great angel wash the heart of the Prophet, but two did. And in reality, this is an honor for them. This is an honor for Jibra'il. And this is an honor for Mikail. May Allah be pleased with them both. Why? Because they get to touch the heart of the best of creation Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They get to touch the heart, the heart that only knows mercy. The heart that only knows mercy. The heart that has the most knowledge of our Lord. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, what a blessed and pure and amazing heart. In various narrations it has come that the Prophet ﷺ said, when Jibra'il was washing my heart, he removed a small dark spot. He removed a small dark spot. The great Imam al dardir may Allah be pleased with him, says, that this small spot that was removed represents Satan's ability to whisper to the Prophet ﷺ. It has come to us in various hadith that Jibra'il himself said to the Prophet ﷺ that هَذَا حَذُّ الشَّيْطَانِ مِنْكَ This spot that I'm removing is Satan's portion from you. The great scholar 
whose book that we are reading through tonight about the 27th of Rajab, about the Isra and Mi'raj, a Sayyid al-Habib Muhammad bin Alawi al-Maliki, he says that it occurred to my heart another opinion, that what is this dark spot that's being removed? And this opinion is that this dark spot was removed because the Prophet Wasallam's heart was all mercy. And by all mercy, we mean it encompassed everything. The proof for this is Allah saying in the Quran, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ We have only sent you, O Muhammad, as a mercy for all the worlds, everything. So who's included under this? Shaytan. The devil will be included under that mercy. So when this dark spot was removed, it removed the devil from that mercy. Otherwise, the Prophet ﷺ would have absolute mercy for him. And the objective of washing the Prophet ﷺ's heart on this night is to prepare him, peace and blessings be upon him, to meet his Lord. We as Muslims, five times a day, pray. And in prayer, what is the salah but an ascension to Allah? The reality of prayer is that we meet with Allah five times a day. And what do we need for the prayer? We need wudu. We can be outwardly absolutely clean, spotless. But if we don't have that inward state of purity, that inward state of ablution will do. Our prayer is not accepted. Why? It is a condition to enter into the sacred state of salah, of prayer. Imagine the Prophet wasallam is going, ascending to paradise. An absolutely sacred place. And ascending and ascending and ascending until he gets to meet with his Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. And only Allah knows how that is, without place, without time, but He meets with His Lord. So if we require will do for prayer, imagine what is required to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the great caller to Allah and the great knower to Allah, Habib Ali al-Habashi, from the blessed city of Sayyun in South Yemen. May Allah help the people of Yemen and may Allah rescue them and all those who are going through difficulty. May Allah rescue them on this blessed night. He said in a line of poetry that in reality the angels did not remove anything from the heart of the Prophet wasallam, but rather they increased him tuhran ala tuhran. They increased him in purity upon purity, in light upon light. Sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam taslima. And uh, after his heart was washed with the water of Zamzam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the angel Jibra'il jaa bi tistin. He then brought forward a golden tray. Mumtali'in or mumtali'atin. Hikmatan wa imanan. And this tray had, the, what were the contents of this golden tray? The contents of this golden tray was wisdom and faith. And he poured them into my chest and then closed my chest. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam taslima. What does that mean? And these are parts where the Muslim really just is in admiration and in awe. That the chest of the Prophet ﷺ was filled with absolute wisdom and absolute faith. And we see this wisdom throughout his life وسلم, and we absolutely see this faith. Jazallahu anna Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward him a rewarding that he's absolutely deserving of. And we will end this uh, short discussion with a second point. And this is a point that the scholars like to discuss on the 27th of Rajab, the night of Isra and Mi'raj. This point is the seal of prophethood. 
the beautiful seal of prophethood that was found near the left shoulder of the Prophet ﷺ. The narrations and ahadith are quite plenty when it comes to this matter. When was this placed on his body ﷺ? Was he born with this seal? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so the scholars of prophetic biography, they say that most likely he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born with this seal. However, due to the numerous uh, narrations that we have, there is no problem with saying that the angels, when they would come to wash his heart, they also uh, placed a seal over a seal. They placed another seal over that original seal. And this entertains all the narrations. And one of those narrations is that immediately after his heart was washed, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this seal was placed on his left shoulder. What is the wisdom behind the seal of prophethood? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The one wisdom that we could say is that it was the norm of the people of that time. If they received any news, and that news or that letter had a seal on it, something that marked it as official, then they knew that to be truthful. This letter is not a letter of a liar. It's not, the less, it's not fake news. This is a true piece of information. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed that my final prophet will have a seal, a physical seal. And this seal will represent not only that he is the most truthful, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but that he is the seal of messengers. There is no messenger to come after him, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, taslima. And uh, this is why, mashallah, the great companion, Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib, he said, and this is narrated by Imam Tirmidhi in the Shama'il, that between his shoulders, between the Prophet wasallam's shoulders, was the seal of prophethood, for he is the seal of prophets. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam taslima. It was oval, it was oval-like in its shape, and it was almost a protrusion of skin. It's like an elevated piece of skin that was in the center of his shoulders, but more closer to the left. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Such a seal that the companions, many of them narrate that they, whenever the Prophet ﷺ would take off his shirt for some reason, they would look for it. Many of them wanted to kiss it. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taslima. And um, the last thing that we would say about this issue of the seal of prophethood is the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, his life, his life and his message is all an introduction to who Allah is. All of the Prophets came and their objective was to inform us by action, state, and statement who our Lord is. So the reality of many of the events that took place in their life will always remain unknown to us. We can say this is what is the wisdom behind the seal of prophethood, but we won't truly know. And there are some things in the life of the Prophet wasallam, that only Allah knows. And that will all be revealed on the Day of Judgment. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be with the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, on the Day of Judgment in the first saf, in the first, in the first row. All of us together in the first row. This is something that we ask for on this night. And as we continue to listen to our other blessed scholars who will speak about this night. We keep in our heart this love for Allah, this love for the Messenger and this respect and honor 
for the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to bless the Ummah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on this night. And we ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that He make us a people who listen and try their best to practice. Wa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Muhammad Wa Ala Alihi Wasallam Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen.